The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom says the state of international religious freedom is getting worse. Christina Ariaga is a member of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Most interesting to me in this new report is that Russia has been added to the list of countries of particular concern. We reported last week that they have banned Jehovah's Witnesses, and there are reportedly more than 170,000 of them in Russia and more than 8 million around the world. Why is this happening in Russia? Why now? The Russian government has taken on draconian measures against religious freedom. In fact, we think this is the first time since post-Soviet era that these religious freedom violations have been put in place. The Putin started with this supposedly anti-extremism laws, and they have been applied to the Jehovah Witnesses, who don't even participate in government. They're pacifists. What we think of the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom is that the Jehovah Witnesses, precisely because they don't participate in government, have become and a threat that's why to the government. The Let's move on to Iraq. I was shocked, shocked, I say, to see that Iraq is only a tier two group, among others like Cuba and Afghanistan. It's been on the list since 2008. Aren't, why has Iraq sort of moved down the list? The report said religious violations are severe, but they don't meet the standard. If you look at these tier two countries here, it's Afghanistan, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Laos, you can see them all there, Turkey, and, and Egypt, too, where we just saw two bombings. How is it possible with non-state actors like the Taliban and ISIS operating there? So Iraq, just like Egypt, and I was just in Egypt a couple of months ago, they have the same issue. They have a government that's trying to stop sectarian violence, but then they have ISIS. This is unprecedented that you have a group that transcends a country operating in both er in both areas. So what we our report judges is how the government is doing trying to stop sectarian violence and Unfortunately, we also have a section for entities of particular concern, ISIS is like one of them. Like in, in-state actors, and it's also the Taliban, and it's also al-Shabaab, -Shab yes. which is, uh, I think, a lesser-known group. Um, let's take a look at the video that we shot in Iraq just a few minutes, few minutes, just a week ago. The bullet holes in the cross, look at that, the graveyards that are desecrated. If this is not a violation of religious freedom, what is is. I don't understand how the designation can be made that they're tier two just because the government is sort of trying to help out. Undoubtedly, the human rights situation both in Egypt and in Iraq uh, is deplorable. And all the 37 countries that are listed in the report have are struggling with a lot of difficulties inside the country, and they're horrible violators of religious freedom. So we're not saying that the situation has improved. We're saying the government is making attempts to improve the situation. When we were in Egypt, it was only a few days after the December 11th bombing, but the Coptic Pope with whom we met said that it was so important that President al-Sisi had actually gone not once but twice to religious ceremonies. That had never happened before. So. I guess what we're seeing here is you have non-state actors like ISIS and you have governments that are improving. It just seems like in all of those countries that all of them should be tier one. Thank you so much for joining us. Christina Ariaga, member of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom.